Adversity introduces a person to themselves. Woo! It, it makes you stronger. I've lived it my whole life. Uh, I grew up very poor. It's in my book. I was homeless at one point in time. And everything that I needed to learn about making money, Jay, I learned when I was 13. But I, was, I didn't see it. And so adversity makes you stronger. Your scars are your superpower. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, also your host. And here on the show, we talk about how to raise private money for your deals without asking for money. Well, I have an amazing guest and friend here on the show to join me today. And what he's known for is teaching his clients how to create wealth without using Wall Street brokers and without using financial planners. Now, all this began with and started with him being inspired from a groundbreaking book, which is titled How to Become Your Own Banker by R. Nelson Nash. Well, to most people, Becoming their own banker was something they couldn't envision or even actually attempt because they had yet to see a viable vehicle and a way to do it like ever before. No obvious or effective plan. Well, most people park their money in, as my guest would say, in prison, in qualified plans or with a broker, hoping that the money's going to grow. Well, he teaches his clients and shows them that Hope is not a strategy that you can depend on. Becoming your own banker is an and strategy, meaning they accumulate money in their money pool and deploy it to make even more money. This is a huge mind shift. So with this knowledge and advantage, his company, which is titled Create Tailwind, I love it, exploded to become a multi-location nationally recognized firm who has helped thousands and thousands of individuals and businesses around the United States. So if you are ready to stop following the followers and pursue some real financial independence, well, my guest can show you how. And just segued over into the uh, infinite banking concept and how that works. So you've raised private money or you wouldn't be here on the show. So tell us what, what is it that happened in your business way back when Jim, that you found yourself needing to raise private money. It's been my experience in interviewing hundreds of experts that have raised private money. Something happened that triggered you that you needed to start doing it. Tell us that story. Yeah. So, you know, I've, uh, over the time, uh, bef at, after I was a, I was a wall street financial planner. That's why I'm anti wall street financial planner. Cause I know exactly I can pull back the curtains, but after that, I started buying businesses and I've bought parts of all of over 30 businesses now. And I want to tell a story about when, uh, it's kind of a hot topic, maybe good and bad uh, in the press, but crypto businesses. And so back in 2017, my business partner and another business came to me and he said, Jim, what do you know about cryptocurrency? And I said, you mean Bitcoin? And he said, no, there's other types of cryptocurrency. And I said, no, Bob, I know the, the, the word Bitcoin. That's all I know about cryptocurrency, that word. And he said, well, because I was with Gateway Computers back in the day, I have this in with NVIDIA and they make the chip that you need, the memory card 
to to go and uh, uh, mine Ethereum. Now, I didn't know how to what mining cryptocurrency meant. I didn't even know what Ethereum was. But we created this company that we were going to create uh, mining computers. And back in that time, Jay, all of the mining computers for cryptocurrency were like on shelves that you would buy at Walmart and they would just, it was open architecture, right? There was no server box, no ventilation, anything else. It was just open architecture. But we had this in, we had the US exclusive for this memory card through NVIDIA. And uh, it's always good to have partners like that, by the way. So we had this opportunity, big order with NVIDIA, et cetera. So what we did is we educated everybody about cryptocurrency and Ethereum and the blockchain. We started doing uh, different things online. We did things in person. We kind of, we, we really just started educating. Once we educated people, people wanted to invest. And that's kind of the thing that I would say the message for me when I've done this, and this is one example, is it's education. Is I if I want to raise money to invest for real estate, educate me on RV parks. Show me the economics of RV parks because then I'm going to want to invest. So to me, Jay, that's what we did is we educated people and then they wanted to get involved. Jim, I love your answer from your experience because I have experienced exactly the same thing. And that's why I talk about my private money teacher hat yeah. all the time, right? It's all about teaching. It's all about educating. And that's why we talk here on the show all the time about we're not running around begging, selling, persuading. You know, desperation has got a smell to it. I've learned over the years, uh, Jim, the worst time to be raising private money is when you need it to close on a deal tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Yep. And um, you know, a case in point on this, I have right now 47 individual private lenders that are loaning us money on our real estate deals. And speaking of education, Jim, not one, not one of these 47 private lenders, a, had ever heard of private money or private lending, didn't know what it was. None of them had ever heard of, of a way that, that you could move uh, your retirement funds into a self-directed IRA and actually truly self-direct it, right? Yep. And you say not have your money in a prison that you can yep. get actually self-directed. And so I, when I started raising private money, I simply started sharing with people, first of all, what's private money, um, how they can earn high rates of return safely and securely. My space is primarily single family houses, but I'm sure you'll agree. It don't matter if it's single family houses, multifamily, commercial, Bitcoin, whatever it is that you're raising money for, as long as you put on your teacher hat and you educate people first, then you know what? I don't even have to, I, I mean, this is what I'm getting ready to say goes so adversely against what I learned in sales training when I was 24 years old. And I was trained, if you don't ask for the sale, you don't get it. But in this world, that's not the case. I simply put my teacher hat on, educate people. And now instead of me chasing the money, the money is chasing me. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. You, you know, uh, Jay, you, you nailed it is, in every business that I have, it's about educating the client or the tenant or the it's it's education a hundred percent. What I tell people is I'm gonna educate you to the point where you're gonna say one of two things. This is for me or this isn't for me. That's it. So my job, I don't sell anything. In fact, in the business for infinite banking, I tell people I'll give you our business model in 30 seconds. One, you never pay us a dollar. The insurance company pays us a commission to, to set up the policy. Two, wherever they start, I have people that start over a million dollars a year going into their insurance policies, which seems crazy to most people when they think about insurance. But wherever they start, they're going to grow it. As their education grows, they want to put more and more money through their own bank instead of somebody else's. And I never ask one person for referrals 
But just like you said, I get way, I get so many referrals every week because once they get that, once they get in their minds what this is and how cool it is and how to use it for businesses, for investing, they want to tell everybody. I don't ask them to tell everybody. Why would I do that? If it's so good, if it's so good for them, then they'll tell everybody. I need to ask them for referrals. But the key is, is that they grow based on their education. So the more money that I would be raising, if I have more education, I have more opportunity. Because when you educate somebody, you create opportunity. Absolutely. As you have raised money, um, private money, et cetera, in the past, What's a big lesson you've learned as to how not to go about it? Well, I, I think you said it. Don't beg anybody is don't beg and don't like feel like you're selling is if they're not buying, you know, always be the seller. So what I, you know, don't be the buyer. I mean, I'm sorry. Always be the buyer. Don't be the seller. Okay. Is I'm buying. I'm looking for people that align with me. I'll go play golf with them. I'll go fishing with them, but they're not going to be my client. And so the thing that I learned is if it's not right, if they don't believe that it's right for them after, and they come to that conclusion, this is for me or this is not for me. If it's not for them, then the conversation's over. That's what I learned. Yes. Thank you. You know what goes hand in hand for me, Jim, along with this mindset of putting on your teacher hat and being an educator and letting people know uh, what it is that you have uh, without begging or selling or chasing. What also goes along with that is serving, having a servant's heart. You know, I've had, I've had countless real estate investors say to me, they so Jay, I have a fear of rejection. I have a fear of, you know, me not being able to raise the money. Well, Jim, here's what I say to him. I say, how can you fear rejection if you're not asking anybody for anything? And if you're serving them with this new way that they can earn rates of return, there is no fear when you're leading with a servant's heart. Do you agree with that? I, I agree with that. One of my favorite books is The Go-Giver. And yeah. it has five stratospheric laws of success. And you always give more value than your payment right? Always. When we create things, we want 10x. If somebody paid us to do something, I want to give them 10 times the value than they paid me. That's just my goal in my head. But you, you, you nailed it, Jay. And you know, when I was in my 20s, I didn't understand that. You talked about getting in sales at 24. I got into the financial services business at 22 years old. I didn't know. I was calling out of the phone book and I was selling. Hey, I want to sell you uh, investments and insurance and annuities. And, you know, what do you think? I mean, my sales pitch was better than that, but they had me listen to all these Tom Hopkins uh, uh, and, and love Tom Hopkins. I'm great. You know, I'm sure a great man, but it, he was selling and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And it wasn't until I realized that I don't have to sell anything. All I have to do is educate people. And like you said, serve them. But Zig Ziglar always said, you know, help somebody get what they want and, and you'll get more than what, you know, than, than you expect. Or I can't remember the way he said it, but but it was basically help other people get what they want. I'll tell you what, Jay, I had to hear that 10 times before it sank in. At 58, I will tell you it's the it's the God's honest truth that that that's all you have to do is help other people get what they want. So you want to raise money? How does it serve them? And 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 I like to say compared to what? So when you think about what you're offering this person compared to what? What does the herd do? The herd puts their money in a 401k let it, and lets it sit there for 20, 30, 40 years. They don't know the tax consequences. They don't know really what their actual rate of return is. They see their average rate of return and they think that's what they're earning. It's not. And they And by the time that they figure out that it didn't work out the way they expected, it's too late. And, you know, motion is the law of God, Jay, as you know, if air doesn't flow through our bodies, we die. 
If blood doesn't th flow through our bodies, we die. If water doesn't flow, it becomes stagnant. If money doesn't move, it dies. So people want opportunity. If you have opportunity and you can educate that person, they will, they, they'll like know, like, trust you, and they're in. That's all you have to do is have a servant's heart and educate them with a servant's heart. Jim, you and I have got 100% the same exact core value. So let's move into your expertise, and that is infinite banking, becoming your own banker. So you just mentioned a moment ago, you've got one client that's putting in a million dollars a year, you know, into their insurance policies. So, you know, most people don't have a million dollars a year to put in. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I, no. what? Let's let's go back to square one. Yeah. What in the world does it mean to become? How, how do you become your own banker? What in the world does that mean? Yeah. So think about this. We're when we have a problem, and whether we realize we have a problem or not, uh, a lot of times we don't, right? Uh, until somebody explains it to us. And here's the problem that we have, Jay, is that you finance you, me, everyone, every single thing that you buy, you either pay someone else interest or you give up interest you could have earned somewhere else. Okay. So what infinite banking does is it makes you the banker because what happens now is that people make money, they go down and they deposit it at their local bank, right? Or their national bank or whatever, their local branch. And then the bank takes that money and they loan it to someone else who pays them interest and then they pay the depositor uh, a smaller amount of interest, right? Okay, which is what, you know, when you're raising money, it's kind of what you're doing too, right? Is you're going to go and you're going to do something with the money and you're going to pay your investors. But with infinite banking, you're controlling that banking function. When you buy this specially designed insurance contract, and it's the way that a bank or a corporation buys, banks have uh, bank-owned life insurance, BOLI, Corporations have corporate-owned life insurance, and it's called Coley, right? So, and they design it for cash value because they know once that money's in there, it's never taxed again. So then you can take the, when you have that money in your insurance contract, you have a contractual right to borrow the insurance company's money. While your money stays in this tax shelter, growing, guaranteed every single day. So all the money you're making from these different investments flows into your policy as a bank, not the commercial bank. But you get to use the insurance company's money, not your own, to go buy these investments, all right, at an interest only. And the rates right now are 4 to 5%. So, you know, I literally was just on the phone with somebody the other day. And it was like, well, Jim, I'm, I'm borrowing money from the insurance company, interest only at 4%. And then I'm investing it and people are paying me 12% because they have real estate opportunities. I said, okay, sounds good. And he goes, how do I do more of that? That was his only question. How do I do more of that? You know, Jim, it sounds to me like that is an infinite rate of return. Now, I could be wrong. So let me share with you what I'm hearing you say yep. and let me share with you the conclusion I'm hearing. And you tell me if I'm understanding this right. So you have an insurance policy. Um, you sell the insurance policy. I can borrow from the insurance company, which is not my money. I'm right. borrowing the insurance company's money yep. at 4%. If I turn around and I loan the insurance company's money out, it's not my money. I'm loaning the insurance company's money out and somebody's going to pay me 12%. I'm now going to do what the big banks in the downtown cities do. They're going to pocket the spread because like you said, they take deposits, which isn't their money. It's their customer's money. They loan it out for a higher amount. How can you calculate your return if it's not even your money that you're loaning out, that you're making money on somebody else's money? You know, I, and I tell people that, oh, Jay, you just nailed it. I mean, <laughs> normally that takes, for you, for that level of understanding what you just said, 
it takes me a couple of hours of courses or education to get people to get that light bulb to go off. And this is really taught, not taught. So you already get it. But that's exactly right. It's not my money. Right. And if I and if I was like Dave Ramsey and I thought that cash didn't have a value. Right. And I was just going to pay cash for everything. And I didn't understand lost opportunity costs like Dave doesn't or it's not as in his message. Then then I would go, well, no, I'd rather pay cash for that. No, 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 no. Why would I pay cash for that? I have no money in the deal. So other people's money, use and control, control. Whoever controls the money makes the money, right? I mean, that we know, we know that forever. Whoever controls the money makes the money. I love it. Now, in my introduction of bringing you here on the show, I, um, I quoted you, and your quote says, hope is not a strategy. Becoming your own banker is. And, and, and in context of your quote, is, you know, someone goes to their financial advisor, stockbroker and says, okay, here's my money. You invest it yeah, and yeah. you're giving it to them and you don't even understand what they're doing with it. Right. They're like on purpose that way on purpose. Yep. <laughs> they're just, they're just, you know, it's going into like this black hole and you're praying that something good is going to come back out of the black hole. So how is your strategy put your client more in the driver's seat of their financial future? Because we're not selling an investment, right? What you're doing with the money, that's different. We're controlling the banking function. We're controlling the money pool, right? And we're flowing money in through that pool and we're making it bigger and bigger and bigger. That's why people end up putting more and more and more money in there. But what do you invest in? Okay, so there's a couple of things that when somebody says that to me, who, not how. I don't want to be go, become the expert. A lot. Of track record and can do that for you. The other, the other tenant from the richest man in Babylon is invest in what you know. Okay, so I just said, who, not how, but if you have some kind of special opportunity. And I'll give you an example. I have one client that puts $300,000 a year, I'm sorry, a month into their infinite banking policies or through their infinite banking policies. And it's from their escrow. This person happens to own a half a billion dollars worth of payments. Now, what I'm saying is that's unusual. That person has an unusual, but it's what they know. So how could they lose money with that? They can't. So it's either who, not how, or if you have some kind of expertise, or I buy 50 trucks for my plumbing company every four years, well, then I can finance trucks because they're a cash flowing asset. Now that is what I call leveraging a non-performing asset. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I love it. Now, just in case uh, we have anyone that needs to jump off before we end the show, I know you've got some information. Uh, you got a URL that you want to give out because I mean, we haven't even really started the conversation really good yet. So let's go ahead and give out Jim. How can people connect with you to learn more about this infinite banking concept? Yeah, they can go to community dot create tailwind all one word dot com. Community dot create tailwind dot com. Perfect, right there. They can go there, and I want to make a special offer to everybody before anybody would jump off the show. Is today only? Okay, this book is launching. My book, um, Jim Oliver, uh, Make Bank Without the Bank. Uh, it's it's on Kindle. You can download the Kindle today for free. And, uh, you know, after today, you could buy a hardcover, paperback, whatever. But in this book, I give you some of these concepts that all align with what we're talking about, Jay. And if you just go and join the community, there are courses on there. It's tax invisible. It's um, what is IBC? What is infinite banking concept? And then there's one that's becoming your own banker. I go through Nelson's book page by page and explain it to you. Those are all free. So if you ever thought about infinite banking, you were just kind of curious. Again, all I want to do is educate you. 
until you come to one conclusion. This is for me or it's not for me. That's it. No sales, no clothes, nothing. I love it, Jim. Again, that website is community.createtailwind.com. Just like a tailwind behind an airplane, I assume. That's what it is, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Jay, because most of us are fighting, uh, uh, a, a most people are fi fighting a financial headwind because they're paying all this interest. They've got a money babysitter. I mean, a financial planner that is, you know, making guesses and they're making guesses and then they hope together. And that's why I say hope is not a strategy because we're, it's all guesses. Change one of them. Oh, you can't put that amount of money in the investment. Okay, let me lower inflation, increase your rate of return. Hey, can you put that amount in there? It's like, wait a minute. That's not a strategy. That's a strategy for you to get money to flow to me, Street. But what's the difference between wealthy people and poor people, Jay? The direction their money flows. Or for a moment. And that is, you talk about this idea of eternal cash flow. And so here's my question. What is eternal cash flow? Why do you focus on it rather than retirement? So, you know, retirement is a fairly new concept, right? It's been around for about 140 years. If you go back, you read the Bible, there's no, there's no retirement. People didn't retire. If I was a professional golfer, which I really wish I was, Jay, I would never want to retire, right? <laughs> you see actors, they love what they do. They don't want to ever retire. They die. You know, my resignation will be in my obituary because I love to serve other people and show them how to do this. But retirement is this. You build up this pool of money, wherever it is. It's in instruments like Wall Street. Then you get to what you think is this amount of money that you need to live off. And then you start the distribution phase, which has all these perils, sequence of, uh, of returns, et cetera. But then you hope you don't run out of money before you die. That is a scarcity mindset. As opposed to, I go buy real estate, right? Passively, actively. I don't care what sector it's in or like what it is. And it produces cash flow. Maybe it's a little cash flow, then a little bit more cash flow, then a little bit more cash flow. But if you keep doing it, you're going to get it to the point where whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 80s, it doesn't matter, where your cash flow exceeds your ideal standard of living. And when your cash flow exceeds your ideal standard of living, then you're financially independent. You're financially free. Those assets, as the government debases our money, meaning that they print more so that the money in your pockets go down in value. The money sitting in Wall Street goes down in value. While they're doing that, your asset gets what? It gets more valuable. Rents go up, right? As inflation happens. So you have to be going with the forces that you You said that one of your favorite books, if not your favorite book, is The Go-Giver. Yep. Guess who I had on the show a few months ago as my guest? Bob Berg? Yes. <laughs> I, I've had him. Isn't he a great guy? Oh, my lands. Bob, I mean, it's like I, I had like I was sort of star truck, starstruck, you know? Was, dude, that's so funny you say that, Jay. I was when I had him on my show, too. I was like, I'm talking to Bob Berg. I, I could have talked to him for three hours about the book. Absolutely. Yes. That, so the go-giver. So uh, before we wrap up, let's do something really, really fun, Jim, on top of what we've already done. Yep. And that is we got our lightning round. Are you ready? I'm ready. All uh, right. If you could be known for only one thing, what would it be? Service. Man, I was asked that question a few weeks ago and my answer was pretty close to yours. I said on authenticity and integrity. Um, next question. 
So we all have challenges that come along. We always have problems that come along that we have to work through. What's one personal characteristic of yours that has been pivotal to your success over all these decades? Persistence. I don't, you know, I failure means nothing to me. I know that I'm going to fail. I, if I do 10 deals, you know, I, but I know my batting average will be better than 800. And you know what, that those failures get me closer to success. And so persistence, in my opinion, is the one trait that you have to have. You cannot quit. You have to keep moving forward. I might be going as slow as a barge down the river, but I'm going. Absolutely. Here's my favorite part right here, uh, Jim. So here's a stack of cards, right? Yeah. It's sort of, sort of, it'll sort of be like a magic trick. You just tell me when to stop. Okay. And we'll see what the question says. All right. Ready? Stop. All right. Let's see what it is right here. Question says, if you could be a backup singer for any band, who would it be? Chris Stapleton. <laughs> I love his voice. I'd just be sitting there listening. And, uh, you know, uh, somebody said to me the other day, well, he just sits there and sings. And I'm like, yeah, but he can sing. Absolutely. Okay. Final lightning round. Uh, share with Point in time and everything that I needed to learn about making money. Jay, I learned when I was 13 but I was, I didn't see it. And so adversity makes you stronger. Your scars are your superpower. That's, that's the quote. I love it. My scars are my superpower. Awesome. Okay. One more time that URL to uh, get the, the, the free education and to learn about what Jim's got going on here, community dot create tailwind dot com. Jim, you get the final word. Well, thank you. I mean, the, the thing that I would say is it's all about how you think. And if you, if you have whatever you think, you will become. Just like in The Strangest Secret, and that's a great video for anybody to watch on YouTube, is if you have negative thoughts, which we all do, get them out of your head. Do whatever you got to do. Pray about it. Um, I imagine it being on a highway the bad thought comes in and it's gone. So what I would say is it's all about how you think. Until you own the real estate between your ears, it's going to be hard to own, earn um, or own traditional real estate. Jim Oliver, thank you so much for joining me, my friend. Jay, thank you so much for having me and audience. Thank you for listening. You got it. Well, there you have it, my friend. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Be sure and subscribe. Ring that bell if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, be sure and follow so you don't miss the next amazing episode coming right up. We'll see you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Conner.